Nice move. Watch this. <laughs> Outplayed, baby. <laughs> What's up, my dudes? It's Tur, and I got another educational commentary for you guys. This one's going to be about your boy Ghostface, showcasing his abilities, because he's got two. So before we get into the educational commentary on my gameplay, let's take a look at his abilities. His first ability is that he can crouch. So yes, all you toxic killers out there, you too can have your fun and teabag the survivors. Yeah, boy! His main ability is Night Shroud, and when activated, this makes Ghostface undetectable, giving him no terrier radius and hiding his red stain. While in Night Shroud, Ghostface has the ability to stalk, kind of like Myers, but kind of not. And I'll go into details and stats once we jump into the gameplay. Now, I'm going to be showing you guys educational commentary gameplay where I'm not using any perks at all or any add-ons. And it's not to flex my skill as Ghostface, because believe me, I'm, I'm just a mediocre Ghostface. But instead, it's to really showcase his abilities without the interruptions of any perks at all. A lot of times, killers will put their abilities on the back burner because of the strengths in their perks or add-ons. And because this is an educational commentary, I want to make sure that I leave that out and focus simply on the abilities. Oh yay, we spawned in at Torment Creek, one of the most survivor sided maps. Now, based on where I spawned in relation to this map, I know that the survivors will spawn along this huge arc. Now, because there's only one generator on this side of that arc, I know that I'm gonna head towards where there's more generators because that's probably where the survivors are going to be. At the start of the trial, the survivors have no clue who they are facing as killer, which is a huge advantage for the killer, especially stealthy ones. So it's important for Ghostface to start the trial activating his Night Shroud and eliminating his Terrier Radius so that the survivors don't know he is approaching, unless of course they have Spine Chill, which totally counters that. Notice how I'm crouch walking to my destination and using obstacles to block the survivors from seeing me. I hear the generator is currently being repaired which tells me that this survivor does not have spine chill, otherwise they would have stopped repairing and kind of snuck away. So instead of approaching from the front, which I can almost guarantee the survivor is looking, I'm gonna loop around and approach from the backside so that I can stalk. Well, as soon as I'm done running into shit, I'll be in position. It takes five seconds to fully stalk a survivor. However, if you lean, it takes only 2.5 seconds to fully stalk a survivor. The stalk progress will be indicated by a filling circle over the survivor's status icon located at the bottom left side of your screen. The survivors are unable to see any stalk progress applied to them until they are fully stalked and notified by an audio sound. At this point, they are marked and suffer from the exposure status effect. That means that they are one hit insta-down for 45 seconds. You'll see this effect count down the 45 seconds on the survivor's status icon. I can clearly see Nia is heading for the pallet, so I'm going to do a little Michael Jackson moonwalk and get the easy one hit insta-down. As soon as I swung at Nia, whether I hit her or I missed her, it broke me out of my Night Shroud ability. Now this means that my terrier radius is 32 meters and the other survivors can hear that. It also means that in order for me to use my Night Shroud again, I have to wait 30 seconds, which is indicated on the Night Shroud ability refill meter. Okay, we're off to a really good start. My Night Shroud is back, so let's go ahead and activate that. And I hear a generator being worked on to my left. So let's head that direction. Um, yeah, so I think Steve forgot he's the survivor and not the killer. Now, I could slug Steve and head back towards the basement to get the other two survivors, but I'd rather just kick the gen, let the survivors reset, and continue the match so that we can all have some fun. Let them reset a little bit. Show my ability. I can hear this generator chugging along. My guess is that there is a survivor just kind of hanging out over here. Now Steve just got unhooked, so I'm going to activate my Night Shroud and peek around the corner to see if I can get some stock points on Steve or the survivor that unhooked him. 
I see scratch marks to my left and directly in front of them a crouching survivor hidden dragon trying to evade my stalk. So I'm going to approach and use my stock to kind of scare her or him out behind the tree to get an easy hit and get into chase. Lori should have took the hit and rotated away from the generators being worked on, but instead she wants to bring me right to them, which works in my favor, so I'm okay with that. I hear that this generator is currently being repaired, but Lori makes a mistake, so I have no problem sacrificing this gen to get an easy down. Immediately after hitting, I turn my camera to face my next target. Now unfortunately she gets the generator done, but I do get an easy hit and I'm applying some serious early game pressure. Steve just healed up, indicated on his status icon, which means he either wasted 32 seconds self-carrying or the MIA survivor healed him. So at worst, only one survivor can be working on objectives. I'm going to carry Lori to a hook towards the direction Kate ran after I hit her in hopes that maybe she's healing inside this structure or I can hear her crying or I can see some scratch marks and get into a chase right away. I want to break line of sight with Lori before I activate my night shroud and that's because it takes only 1.5 seconds for a survivor to reveal Ghostface out of his night shroud ability. I see a lot of Ghostface killers instantly activate their night shroud after they hook a survivor but that hook survivor can still pull you out of your ability and now you just wasted 30 seconds before you can use night shroud again ghostface has a movement speed of 115 percent that's your typical trapper or tier 2 myers it's your typical killer speed while in crouch his movement speed is 90 percent which is slower than a survivor running and at any point you try to stalk your movement is reduced 50 percent and if you're stalking a survivor it's reduced an additional 20%. So every time I stalk this Nia, I'm actually moving at 70% reduction. I have no problem letting Nia go here. I built up a ton of stalking progression on her, and that audio sound you're hearing lets me know that there is a survivor nearby trying to reveal me. Now, I see scratch marks leading out the door to the left. However, I'm going to kick this generator to regress it and take a peek to the right side to see if anyone's working on that generator. Obviously there's not, so now I'm going to head towards the survivor to the left. This is where the stalking between Myers and Ghostface is different. With Myers, the stalk progression is greatly intensified based on the distance between him and the survivor when he's stalking. Whereas with Ghostface, his stalk progression is at a fixed rate, meaning that as long as you are within 40 meters of the survivor, it will progress at the same rate as if he was a foot away from you. I want you to notice that I stop stalking once I get Kate to 99%, and that's because Kate is already injured and one hit away from the dying state regardless if I expose her or not. So you might be wondering, well why even stalk her then? And that's because while giving chase to Kate, ideally I will come across another survivor, which two of them are already injured, down them and hook them, knowing that Kate is only one stalk progression tap away from being exposed, even if she heals. By the way, did you see that tractor tech? By doing a lunge attack as you come off the side of the ramp, you will land on the haystack and you can hit the survivor if they stay up there after vaulting the tractor window. Okay, let's go ahead and kick this gen and start its regression and then hook the cake and get over to the other side where all the survivors must be. You know, if I lose this gen, it's not the end of the world. I would much rather late game protect the gens that are closer together and less distance for me to have to travel. Barbecue and chili would be really nice right now, wouldn't it? But you know what? Running the killer without perks or without add-ons is really a challenge and it's really good for you because it really forces you to pay attention to the little things like seeing scratch marks or seeing crows respawn or hearing cries or hearing just breathing or someone running through the grass and I actually run no perks whether it's survivor or killer quite often because it translates over when you do use perks and makes the game so much easier so let me know in the comment section if you also run killer or survivor with no perks and if it has helped you improve your skills and if you haven't tried this and are up for the challenge I highly recommend you do try it because eventually you will take notice and your skills will improve and if you like what I'm doing with my educational commentary videos, hit the like and subscribe button. I promise it won't hurt you. 
and it's literally free. And it also shows me that what I'm doing is actually helping some people, and that's all I really care about. And one last thing before I get back to the commentary. I am really close to being able to stream on Twitch. I just need a few more things to arrive in the mail. Okay, so I would have thought that the survivors would have been working on generators, but apparently they thought it would be a good idea to waste their time and heal up. So maybe I need to bring the pressure to them instead of hoping that they'll bring it to me. Okay, so I just saw a survivor heading towards that generator using my stocking ability. Now I would imagine that there's at least two over on that generator. And I'm getting kind of bored, so I'm going to head over there. DC hit on Lori, and I'm going to twist around and give chase to the person on the generator. Well, hello, Mia. And now it's time for you to die. Hey, get your sweet ass back over here. I'm gonna moonwalk and cut Nia off at the other side. However, Nia's kind of a potato, and I probably big brained outplayed myself there. Fuck me, another gen popped. Well, Nia's going down. Hey, do you see those scratch marks next to that gen right there? I'm gonna head over there and see if I can't apply more pressure. Oh man, that final generator is really chugging away. Nice pallet stun, Kate. But I will break this pallet kick the generator and pick up Mia so it's not a complete loss. Well, there's a hook up on the hill and there's a hook in the structure. Where do you think I'm gonna put Mia? You bet your bottom fucking dollar I'm gonna put her up on that hill, especially with Ghostface because I might be able to stalk from a distance anyone that goes in for the save. Did you just hear that? One of the survivors thought it was a great idea to cleanse a totem right here. And I know exactly where the totem spawns at this tile, so this is gonna be an easy hit. And it's freaking Lori who's injured? That is like such a bonehead move for her to do late game. Now, I'm about to make a huge mistake. And look, we all make mistakes, but a lot of times you see streamers only show their, you know, amazing gameplay. They don't show their faults. And I think it's important that we do show faults because again, we all make mistakes and you actually learn more from mistakes than you learn from succeeding. And so because this is an educational commentary, I want to go over that and, and discuss that so that hopefully you guys don't make the same mistakes that I'm making. Okay, so you see that hook right there? You know, the one that I was contemplating hanging Nia to? Look at how close that hook is to the hook that Nia is actually hanging on right now. If I would have took Lori to that hook instead of this one, I could patrol between the two and bank on the survivors being altruistic. I hear a survivor unhooking Lori, so I'm gonna hit that survivor. Now that gives me two injured survivor and one survivor on a hook. Okay, that notification is Stevie Boy going in for the unhook on Nia. Now if I can get a quick hit on Steve, and then rotate over to Lori who is also going in for the unhook on Nia, I'm going to be in a really good position. Alright, I got that hit on Steve, and now I'm about to make a 10,000 IQ play. So I see Lori going in for the unhook on Nia. I instantly activate my Night Shroud, making it so that I have no Terrier radius, which means no borrowed time on Nia. I got the survivors right where I want them. If I leave Lori slugged on the ground and apply pressure to the other three survivors who are all injured, I'm gonna get a 4k, no problem. But I'm a fucking idiot, so what do I do? I stop pursuit and I go pick up Lori who DS's me. And just like that, one simple mistake turns a 4k into a 1k. Ah, <gasps> oh, nice yes. Good, well done. Well done. Look, that's the big difference between playing killer and playing survivor. As a survivor, you can make multiple mistakes throughout the trial and still recover, no problem. I mean, shit, look at these fucking survivors. They made a ton of mistakes and still bounced back with no problem. But as a killer, if you make one or two mistakes in the trial, it's gonna cost you and you're not gonna be able to bounce back from that. It takes 33 seconds for three survivors to fully repair one generator. So at this point, I understand that I'm only going to be able to kill Lori. And honestly, I'm okay with that. To me, it's not important oh, no. to get a 4K. You know, I care more about 
um, how I play. You know, did I use his abilities well? Did I outplay the survivors in certain cases? You know, if I did make a mistake, hopefully I learned from my mistakes. That's that's important to me. I, I can care less about you know, winning or losing. That shit is just fucking relative in my so opinion. They're not gonna come to this and that's going to do it for this educational commentary where I use Ghostface with no perks and no add-ons. Now, I hope you guys learned something, maybe a thing or two. I don't know. And uh, if you'd like to see maybe me do a Ghostface video with perks, let me know in the comment section. I'd love to do it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll get more educational commentary videos out to you guys soon.